Is that okay so far? So it would be 2.8, or wait, sorry. Um, so it would be two times two pi r. That's the top, the bottom is two pi r. You have two of them, that's where the two comes in. The point eight is the cost to weld the circumference. Oh, okay. So yes, we will simplify here. 3.2 pi r like that. And then you notice you have two variables, that's bad, but you have this other equation. So you solve this other equation for either eight or r. I would recommend solving for h because it's easier, because it's already in a, you don't have to take a square root or anything, which is gonna make sense. So you get a thousand over pi r squared like that. You take that and substitute it in here. And now you have 0.8, 1,000 over pi r squared. If you take calculus next year or sometime in the future, you'll learn how to do this by hand. But for now, you have to print. Did you plug that into a calculator on the? Graphing calculator. Yeah. And you I thought like yes. a calculator, by the way. Oh, good. Um, do you want me to graph this? And uh, snip sure, it yeah. in or show you how to graph it? Are you using, what are you using on your phone? What are you using for your application? Uh, TI-84 plus C. Oh, okay. All right. So I can show you how to do it in a TI-84 if you want. Okay. TI-384. It's up to you. Um, me, uh, whatever, whatever works best for you is fine. I, I know how to use a calculator for the most part. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's faster for me to not use that tool. That's okay, so yeah, very it's, archaic, it's fine. but, uh, yeah, it's worth graphing. Um, I don't know the, uh, also kind of just a fact that it actually works the way we think. Um, so the, uh, the other thing here is to kind of only graph where, the window that you care about. So we're trying to minimize the cost. And you can see here, there it is. Dips down, there's your min right there. So that means that R is 3.7. I don't know if we got any units. The reason it's R is because we're, we, we, we're using R there, 3.7 inches. And then to find the the height, you would use this equation here, 1,000 over pi r squared. H is 1,000 over pi, 3.7 squared like that. Does it ask for the volume? Um, it was not for anything. It just, oh, it says find the height and radius of the least expensive. There's, we already know the volume is 1,000. So okay. the cost, they don't actually ask for the cost. Okay. This other number is the cost. Must have put it in weird. Hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. In terms of a window that might work well for you, um, zero to 10 would be good. Zero up to hundred on the Y would probably probably do it. I think I hold on. I I messed something up because I do not have that. You you may have to put this in parentheses down there on your uh, uh, PI A three A four. Let me type it in again. Hold on. Okay, and then you said um, zero to a hundred on the Y. Yeah, that looks like it'll do it. Okay.
So is it about okay? Yeah, I got it. Good. So the 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 thing to take away from a problem like this is you're going to write two equations. One is volume, area, something like that. The other one is cost or something out, and you're always going to substitute one into the other. You're always going to use the calculator to find the min or the max. Okay, that makes sense. And the variations on it are here. You know, you, we could spend two lessons doing all these problems if we wanted. Oh, um, yeah. But uh, I would recommend we transfer to something else. What would be next kind of on your list for uh, things to work on? Could we could we do some of the sum and difference identities? Do you have do you know if we could find anything? Yeah, no, I can find lots of things here. Let me uh, send drop something in the chat here that will be extremely useful to you, maybe not just now, but down the road. So uh, why did I do that? Okay, so in the chat, I'm sending you a link to a reference sheet that I really like um, for trigonometry. And I just want to confirm that this is what you're actually asking for, which is, I'm going to snip these in here. These are the sum and difference formulas. Is that what you're asking for? Yeah. Okay. All right. So are you going to have to memorize these or be given them? I have to memorize them. Oh, boy. I know. Well, good luck <laughs> on that. I you, you you probably have some ways to do that. I'll I'll just talk about how to actually use them. I'm going to assume you have them while we're working on them because it's 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 a lot here. Yeah. So, that's the, fine. The, so the, the most common type of problem would be something like this. What is the sign of? And I'll make it pretty easier. Like 75. I'm sorry. Yeah, 75 degrees. Okay. And what you're supposed to recognize is that this is really the sign of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. Okay. Now why now why these values? Well, if you remember your unit circle, there's certain places that are nice on the unit circle. 30, 45 and 60 uh -huh. among others. You have to build up this angle, could be in radi it could be in radians out of other ones. So we'll do this one to start out. So we're using the the first sum and difference formula and the way it works to memorize it if you're you're trying to find a few shortcuts here is the way this works is in alpha and beta just that's what this thing uses you can use x and y and b whatever the sign on the top goes with the sign on the top or operator on the top sign on the bottom goes with the one on the bottom you'll see that it's flipped in cosine plus goes with minus minus goes with with plus okay all right so you just you just say okay well alpha is 30 beta is 45 so you just write, okay, sine 30, sine 45, plus cosine 30, sine 45. This is your most basic vanilla problem that you can get with law of signs. I'm sorry, uh, sum and different formulas. So then you have to know these values. So if you, if you look at that reference sheet, it does have a unit circle on the third page, which I assume you don't get, so you have to memorize. For the time being, I'll assume you have it. Um, sine of 30 is the y value at 30 degrees. That's one half. Sine 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2. Sine 45 is square root of 2 over 2. These always have a matching denominator. Um, so that's kind of a check. Like if you get something that isn't the same on both, you probably made a mistake. So this becomes the square root of two over four plus the square root of six over four. And then if you can, you combine the numerators. So in this case, it's it's just square root of two plus square root of six over four. Not much else that can be done. Okay, there. sounds good. So that's kind of your, your vanilla problem. Uh, the, the more challenging ones would be like, what is cosine of pi over 12? So we can do it in radian. Um, you have to get the pi over 12 from something, okay? And yeah, so we almost, help. we almost, I don't think we've ever really used degrees in, in um, like these these problems. Right. And, and you probably, probably mm -hmm. won't. Okay. So so this is, this is the combination, pi over three minus pi over four. Um, this is a common one that you see on tests. Um, so you just have to apply the formula. So having having it is really important. 
Um, I'm, I'm a little shocked you have to know all of them because they're. Yeah, no, my teacher, my teacher's really like, I don't know if you've heard of him, but Mr. Banan. Well, there's just, it's just useless information. I mean, yeah. you, don't need, you don't really need to memorize this, but you need to know how to use it. So I would give you the formula and say, give you harder problems to see if you know how to use it. But yeah. you have to be able to recognize, okay, it's pi over three minus pi over four. This becomes... Like I've said here, that if it's minus, it switches to the plus, but it's cosine pi over three, cosine pi over four, plus sine pi over three, sine pi over four. Now, if you do enough of these, you do see the pattern. You realize that sine is sine, cosine, cosine, sine, and you keep this the same order. Cosine, yeah. cosine, cosine, sine, sine flip the order there is a way to remember it wait so is it okay i got it sign number four and then You want me to keep working this one out or are you trying to work it out from here um i'm trying to work it out give me yeah. just a second plus Okay, is it the square root of two plus the square root of six over four? Yeah, that's one of the forms. That that is correct. Okay, cool. I think so. I th there, there are there are a number of other ways to ask you to do these problems. Like this is just like a very like we're touching it. We're not really doing all the complicated problems. You got to know the formulas though. Right. You can see tangent is even worse, but keep in mind tangent is sine over cosine. So if you're really stuck, you can do the expansion of sine, then the expansion of cosine, and then divide. Yeah, that might be what I have to do. This one's not that bad to remember, though. I mean, it, like you look at it, it seems awful, but you stare at something long enough, you realize it's it's in the order, it's in the order, plus minus flipped with a one. I know there's a million other things you're trying to remember. Does the but... upside down, does the upside down plus minus symbol? Oh, okay. It, so... it means that it means that plus goes with plus on the top and minus on the bottom. Oh, the okay. minus goes with minus on the top, plus on the bottom. That Otherwise, makes... there'd be there'd be six forms. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, does that satisfy what you want to do on sum and difference formulas? Yeah, that's great. Okay. All right, well, where should we go to next? Um, let me look at what I sent you real quick. I think it'll, it'll be a little bit easier then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away for 10 seconds, I'll be right back. Okay. All right, I am back. Um, let's look at the logarithms next. Okay. 
right? Um, we can do a lot of these because they're they're all pretty short. Um, is 19 and 20 an expand type problem? Um, let me see. Yeah, it's from a different set of problems. We could do one from that and then two from the second set. Okay. Let's do, let's do 19 and maybe 21 and 23. Sure. Sure. So there's a, there are three main properties, laws of logarithms. Uh, the first one here is that you bring the, the exponent down in front. So this becomes four log six to the fourth over five, like that's is that okay? Yeah. Remember that one? Then inside here is a is a is a quotient, A over B. Quotients become different. So this is four. And think of what's here as as being inside parentheses brackets. Log six to the fourth minus log of five. So this, this quotient inside parentheses becomes a difference. Log base B of A minus log base B of B. Is that okay so far? Let me write that down real quick. Okay. And... Okay. Okay, so the uh, next thing here is you can distribute this four into both. So it's four log base six of four minus four log base log or log of five like that. And then you can actually again bring this exponent out in front. Um, we could have done it earlier, but this is kind of the more appropriate time. So it becomes four times four is 16 log six minus four log five like that. It is base 10 when it's not written. It's not needed in this problem. Something to think about for down the road, remember. 16. Is that like the LN? Wait, so what is what is LN? I guess is LN, LN is is log base E. Oh, okay. It's the shorthand for that. It was it was never really used as a standard until I'll say the last like 60 years, you know, which seems like a long time, but logs were written out this way for a long time. If you look at a really old textbook, you'll see that. Oh, that's cool. So that's the expanding stuff. Um the condensing. Which I don't really like that word, but they 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 various the standard word condense. Um you basically undo in the in the order that we just did. So you end up moving X, the coefficients and turning those into exponents first. This becomes log x to the 20th plus log y to the fifth. And then a sum, a sum here, we have log base b of a plus log base b of b it becomes log base B of A times B. So you're, you're condensing to a single logarithm like that. Oh, okay. Log. I know you said 23. I mean, I would, I would like to do 26 or 27 or, or maybe change up 23 to include some negatives um i'm, um, I'm down to do whatever whatever okay. you can let me modify a little bit here modify um 23 so we'll go we'll go log z minus one third log x minus one half log y. Now, if the three is on the bottom, it's still one third, or the same thing with the two. Just I'm just kind of manipulating a little bit. You okay. still move the the, the coefficient as in front as an exponent. 
So I'm going to show it two ways because you might see it this way on a test. Log x to the one third power log of the square root of y. So the square root of something means that's something to the one half power. Okay. You could write as the cube root here, but I'm showing it both ways just to kind of give you coverage on that. Okay. Now, the way this works is the first two are a quotient. So this becomes log of z divided by x to the one third, like that, minus log square root of y. Is that, is that clear so far? Yes. So okay. it becomes it becomes yet another quotient when you combine the stuff. It's it's v over x to the one third in the numerator, square root of y, and the other. So it's always like a, which is a over b, which is b. And so to simplify this, you multiply the top and bottom by the reciprocal. It ends up being log z over x to the one third square root of y. And this is this is your your final answer. Now I want to just snip something real quick because I want you to see the pattern here. The pattern is that if it's positive, it goes in the numerator. If it's negative, it goes in the denominator. Okay. And that's kind of your shortcut. If you, you know, if you do enough of these, you stare at it and you're like, oh, that always works. That's going to save me some time. That's cool. That makes sense. All right. Um, any others here that, that you see that are like, oh, I'd like to work on one of those? Any of those kind of stand out to you? I think I'm good on this for now. Okay. Where do you want to go from here? Let me let me see. Changes. Maybe we could do some of the box optimization problems. Sure. Or I think just one of them would be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, take a look. See if there's one that uh, let's do number stands four. out. Number four. four. The different variables. Okay. All right. Give me, give me just a second. All right, no problem. All right. Um, all right, I apologize. I'm, I'm back. I, uh, no so, okay, a, an open top box will be constructed with material costing $7 per square meter for the sides and $13 per, per square meter for the bottom. The dimensions are to have its length equal to twice its width. Find the dimensions of the box of largest volume that can be built with at most $300 of materials. What is the volume? Okay. So one of the things I didn't really emphasize is there's always a maximization thing or a minimization thing constraint and then there's also kind of like a volume or an area um this one we're trying to maximize the volume so the volume the volume is 2x times x times y length times width times height is that is that okay there yeah. all right that's the that's the thing we're going to end up graphing because we're trying to min max that. We want to get the largest volume. We're trying to maximize it. All right. So, so now we're looking for a constraint. So when you get to um, uh, in a different course in uh, engineering, you'll they call these, uh, well, never mind. It doesn't matter. So, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> you have constraints, all right? And the constraints are like, we only got $300 of material. So we better use it wisely. So the the uh, the side, you can use $7. So there's there's a front, there's a front and a back and a right and left. So the front is 2X times Y and the right is X and Y, but you got two of them. So the it's it's two x y, but there's two of them, plus x y, but there's two of them, and those those are thirteen dollars times uh, each of those. That's the lateral area around the around the box. Then you have to add to it. You've got a bait. So that'd be two two x squared. Two x squared. You only got one of those, but the cost oh. of that is the uh, thirteen. So the, the there's a pattern here. There's price times the area times how many you have. Price times the area times how many you have. Price times the area. Okay. And 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 that's our that's our cost. And we know that we have just three hundred dollars for this. So this ends up being uh, 52XY plus 26XY plus 26X squared. Now, uh, if it wasn't obvious before, you're going to solve for Y um, because Y is the easiest one to substitute in for up here in the volume formula. So you've got to solve this for Y. Um, this is really 300 equals 78XY plus 26X squared. 300 minus 26X squared equals 78XY. And then you divide both sides by 78X. So Y ends up equaling 300 minus 26 X squared over 78 X. And then we go back to the volume. The volume was two X squared Y and we're gonna put all of it's in for, for Y. So it's another, it's another uh, calculator thing. Your volume is two X squared times minus 26 X squared over 78 X. On your calculator, make sure you add parentheses in the numerator and the denominator. And now you graph. When you take calculus, you can learn how to do it by hand. Okay, let's see. Volume. What's a fun equation? Two X squared. Yeah. Oops, that's not gonna help. We need to clean the path at that point. That's when you graph it, it does have a max. Is it, um, oh, uh oh. I must have done something wrong. 
Yeah, these are kind of kind of awful to graph. Especially on a calculator like this. Yes. Two. So the the way, yeah, I, I I would show it this way: two x squared parentheses parentheses three hundred minus twenty six x squared close parentheses slash seventy eight x, and that should do it. And your y one. Okay, I got the right. There we go. Yeah, I just didn't put the parentheses around the 78x. Did you get the 1.96? I did, yeah. Okay, great. So you get that, and then you you can put it back in to find you know, whatever else you want. In this case, you want y maybe in this equation. So, all right. Um, What else would you like to look at? It doesn't look like we've done any trig identities. Um, we also have this other paper with proving identities. That's kind of the same as the identities. Solving, do, okay, verify. Let's do the, there's one, you know, the the one that kind of looks like a, a PowerPoint presentation. Yes. But on a piece of paper. Yep. Can, we do, can we do the example? It's cosine to the four y minus sine four y is equal to cosine two y. Uh, I'm just not, uh, I'm sorry, cosine of the four y minus sine four y equals cosine two y, that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's fine. All right, so cosine the fourth power y minus sine to the fourth power y, and we want this to equal cosine 2y, like this. All right, is that okay? That, so the you have to choose which side to work on. And the side to work on is the more complicated side in general, which sounds really weird, but you generally do the more, more difficult one. Um, now on the left here, this is actually difference of squares. So okay. this becomes cosine squared y minus sine squared y times cosine squared y plus sine squared y. Oh, and then the cosine squared y plus sine squared y that goes to um, one. Okay. Good. So we're getting better. We're getting close. You know, we're we're you know got to get rid of. It. They, they call these uh, power reduction. Um, but the same thing we've done in the other one's an identity, right? And it can just be cosine of two y. It is if you remember that, which is good that you remember that. I was just gonna see where where we went. Yeah, we we yeah. have to memorize those two. So, so it's really pretty quick if you if you um, see that. That's good. Okay, cosine. Okay, that's a lot easier than I thought it would be. I just didn't get past the difference of squares. They, they can be very difficult. You can go down a lot of roads that don't work. Um, yeah, I mean, knowing your double angle formulas is, is good. Yeah. Okay, can we do some of the other... I think there were some practice problems on one of the other pages. You see, yeah. Why don't you pick pick out the ones uh, that you you'd like us to do? If you see one stands out, number three on the. I think there's only two pages of. Tr oh wait, no, that's is that's that the an x that's you can x minus sin x. Uh, I'll, I'll snip it. I'll snip it in. 
Yeah, we could just do we could just do that one. That's good. Okay, this is a nice starter question. Um, one of the basic strategies to convert everything into sine and cosine. So tangent is sine x over cosine x. Cosecant x is one over sine x minus sine x. Um, so that's kind of one thing that you might notice. So when you when you distribute in, and, and sometimes you sometimes you gotta kind of look ahead and be like, well, what's gonna happen when I distribute in? When you distribute in, the signs are going to cancel here, and you're going to get 1 over cosine x, which is okay. But when you put it here, it doesn't really get better. But we got to do something, so we might as well do that. So it ends up being sine x over cosine x sine x. I'm just writing it out in case you want to look at this later. Minus sine squared x over cosine x like that. This is becomes 1 over cosine x minus sine squared x and there's something good see how the see how the uh, bottoms are the same yeah okay so that means that you can make the tops the same or combine the top so it becomes one minus sine squared x over cosine x and when you see a sine squared or cosine squared you should always think identity it's right. the same one we used before. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. Cosine squared x equals one minus sine squared x. Oh, so, so the new problems. yes over cosine x, and then they they do cancel, so you end up getting just cosine x out of all that. Cool. Let's try a more complicated one, I guess. Okay. Um, maybe one where you have to use identities or some more like. They're all the same to me. So you'll have to pick one that you feel okay. like is, is really obnoxious. I mean, keep in mind, these can take a long time, but I mean, I'm happy to, to try some maybe. Uh, with you. Let's just do number eight. Number eight. Okay. That looks like a pain. Uh, we talk about sine squared x times cotangent squared x plus one. Yeah. So that one is an identity, the cotangent squared. So there's if you if you go back to that reference sheet I sent you. Let me see if I don't know where. Um, I don't know why I closed it. Um, the there's three trig identities that you need to know. They're called the Pythagorean identities. I'll step them in here. You really need to know all three of these. The first one's the most common, but you can see inside parentheses here, it's just cosecant squared. Like that. Oh, okay. And it's 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 the kind of thing where once you get it, it goes pretty quick. Um, you can see that these just cancel, becomes one. A um, a shortcut, which doesn't work all the time, is to try to graph it and see if you notice something from the graph. Like you might you might this one would graph to just a straight line at one. Some, sometimes they're they're intuitive, obvious once you see that, but not a guarantee. Yeah, you know, works sometimes, not all the time. Right. What the what else do you see? Maybe we could do more of the. Do you have? Do you have any problems that could do more of the double angle identities? Yeah, I mean the the like time I'd like the sine two theta. Yeah. Yeah. So the the classic questions where is where they give you two triangles and they, they say like this is A and this is B. And they give you they tell you like, oh, this is three and four, and this is I'll make this negative three and this one is uh five and twelve 
and they ask you to find the the uh, sine of 2a, for example. Okay, so you have to first know that this is 2 sine a cosine a. And then you also have to find the missing side, which is 5. And then use the, the sine of a and the cosine of a to uh, simplify this. So you got 4 fifths times minus 3 fifths. And then you reduce as much as you can. So this one's a uh, minus 24 over 25, like that. They can combine them. So you can, you can, um, like, I know you didn't ask, but like you could do a sine A plus B problem with two triangles. That's another possibility. Uh, if you're doing cosine of two B, for example, you have to figure out which of the, the the three flavors that it comes in. It's got three different versions. I think we used this one earlier, cosine squared B minus sine squared B. Okay. And then you, you go to that triangle, like, oh, I need the hypotenuse and you, you solve it for the hypotenuse. And then you say, okay, cosine B, that's, Five over thirteen squared minus uh, twelve over thirteen squared. They they like the squared ones because if you ever have roots in your in your triangle, they go or radicals they go away. Oh, okay. There's no meaning to any of this, so you can't really take much from the numbers. Like, why is it negative? I don't know, just this <laughs> in this problem. Like it is in this one, it is. I mean, I just made something up. There's no physical significance, but there's there's no way to really like say, oh, that makes, you know, I can see why that works. Um something like that. So yeah, you got to know all the sign formulas. They do come around in identities. I mean, it it sounds like you need to know everything in that that uh, Lamar Rick cheat cheat sheet I sent you. That's that's everything in trig you'll ever need. And okay. you do use it again in calculus. So if you actually know it, you'll do, you'll have a chance in calculus of doing well. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. All right. A little bit slow for next year. Yeah. Okay. Is it okay if we stop here? I feel like yeah. you got everything you wanted to answer today. All right. Very good. Let me go ahead and uh, stop the recording here.